Hi, Dr. Bailey, call and receiver. I appreciate you getting that information over to me. And I want to spend a little bit of time here. Um, since you're a new practice opening up, you don't have you know a web presence at all, really. Uh, I want to touch on a couple of the things I've seen on the internet so far about you. Uh, a couple of the aspects that you'll want to focus on uh, to you know start generating new patients when you open your doors. And then touch a little bit on the demographics and, and how I would see implementing those into a web marketing plan that's going to get results for you. And by results, I'm not talking about hits and clicks and SEO. I'm talking about, you know, putting butts in your chair uh, because that's what it's all about. You know, uh, all too often we see practices who hire marketing companies that do SEO or do pay-per-click or they design them a pretty website. And I just had a guy this week who came out and, and point blank told me, he said, Colin, I've got... I." your websites are not as aesthetically pleasing as what I'm looking for. And I said, well, you know, that's, that's your right to your opinion, um, but pretty doesn't sell. Ten times out of ten, the prettiest websites just simply don't convert people into prospects, into leads, into phone calls. Um, and I can show you examples of that out the wazoo. But I don't want to let this run too long here. I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, so let's jump right in. Um, I've got the demographics pulled up here. I don't want to, you know, since this video is on the internet, I don't want to go through any of your really detailed research. Um, but you know, using this map here, looking at some different demographics and areas around your practice, um, you've got some really nice uh, demographics. You've got some great pools of patients to to pull from. Um, you know, that that surrounds you on several sides. Um, I've gone in here and looked at a couple of the searches. Um, and what we generally see on these kind of short general searches is we see a lot of people marketing that um, frankly shouldn't be marketing. Um, people that uh, when you go after these very very general keywords Fredericksburg dentist, Spotsylvania dentist, um, it, it really shows an immature um, search on the part of the prospect and what you'll find as people go through this list and they look deeper and deeper and deeper you'll see that they don't really want you know maybe they started with Richmond dentist and then they go well I don't want just Richmond let's go Fredericksburg let's narrow it down um, and then they'll go Fredericksburg dentist that sees children if that's you know your niche or Fredericksburg dentist oral surgeon and they're gonna narrow it down they're gonna narrow it down narrow it down until they finally find the right person for what they're looking for, um, they may even plug in, uh, you know, a uh, a zip code to follow up. Um, and I'm trying to find a zip code here on the screen to to plug in here real quick, uh, but I'm not uh, seeing your local zip code. But I'm seeing a, a good number of advertisers on here. That tells me that you know there's obviously some level of success that people are having in your market area there's good pools of patients to pull from which you already know from your demographics and from your research um, now you won't necessarily want to go after those same keywords you really want to look at the long tail keywords uh, the keywords that are going to be as that searcher matures and learns and educates him or herself uh, that person's going to be more qualified when they come into your website to make a phone call so when you're doing you know, pay per click or SEO or any kind of marketing online, you want to make sure that you're going after the keywords that people are actually searching for you or for somebody like you. Um, you know, when you go after the very general keywords, who knows what they really want? It might not be you. They might want a dentist for their kid or for their, um, you know, who knows uh, what they might want. They might be looking for a dental school and they accidentally type in Fredericksburg Dental instead of Fredericksburg Dentist. Uh, and um, you know, then you've paid for a search or you've paid for optimization that that person's going to come in and is not going to be a prospect for you. I did a little bit of online uh, reputation searches here. Um, found a couple pieces of information with you, of course, your uh, current practice there. Um, found you on Health Grades, found you on Google, found you on uh, Yelp, found you in a couple different places. Um, I want to point out a couple things that I see here. Um, I did find some negative stuff about you on the internet, which you know everybody's got negative feedback. 
Um, it's not necessarily out of the blue, but uh, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to it and that you're mitigating it as it comes. Um, with uh, you know, I did find your Google Plus page here, which you need to get claimed, get some information plugged in here. And then I found you over here on uh, Rate MDS, and there was a couple scathing reviews on here, and it doesn't look like anybody has really responded to them, uh, which you know they do allow you to do. Most review sites, you can respond to the person. Now, that doesn't mean you can necessarily get the review deleted or taken down, but if you have a prospect that's upset or angry like some of these people are, and you simply respond to them, um, you know, that looks good to the public. It's, it's just good PR. Um, you know, you can open a dialogue with that patient and at least try to meet them somewhere in the middle or, or at least resolve their problem um, so that, you know, they're not going around here posting in all caps and, and doing crazy things like this. What I would see for a, a marketing campaign, um, take the demographic, the research that, that you've already done, that you've already spent you know, a lot of time looking at, and implementing that into your SEO and your pay-per-click campaign. Um, you know, a lot of that stuff is, is similar to the same stuff we produce uh, when we're looking at you know, what market areas do you want to hit in this city or this suburb. Um, you know, every city, every town, every place has you know, good areas and bad areas. Um, you know, something to take into consideration too is while somebody might live in an affluent neighborhood, they may work in a not so affluent area. So you also want to look at business versus residential maps, making sure that if that prospect searches while they're at work, you're also hitting them online. You know, if you're doing direct mail, you're going to want to hit it at their home. Um, if you're online, you want to expand that a little bit to accommodate where they might work. Um, you know, where they might have, you know, uh, uh, they might be at Starbucks on the Wi-Fi. Who knows where they're going to find you online. So you, online's a little bit different from print in that respect that you don't want it to be so tight. Now, you can really tighten it down as much as you want online, but typically we see that excluding a good number of good leads just for those few reasons there that I mentioned. Um, most of, of new doctors like yourself, new practice owners, uh, look into our Web 3.0 package for a couple reasons. Um, first off is the other packages all contain aspects of video. And while there's absolutely no downside, only a lot of upside to getting video online, um, new grads, new practice owners don't have the new patient flow uh, to or the, the patients in general with new grads to be able to call them and say, hey, come in and shoot a video. So a lot of times it's just a matter of, um, you know, you, you don't have the people that can sit in front of the video camera yet to, to get those testimonials. Um, if that's not the case and you have some people, um, you know, we do have some uh, guys that have worked as associates or partners before they go out on their own and they'll do a, a small video shoot, um, you know, a one day or, or like I mentioned on the phone, we've got some doctors that come to us. Uh, we've got a green screen studio here in Louisville uh, and we can shoot 30, 40 videos with you in a day, have you back home in time for dinner, and um, you know, produce a really nice web presence that's going to uh, show people your human side. At the end of the day, people want to do business with people they like. And if you can humanize yourself, humanize your office, show that your practice is a good place to come, um, you know, that's, that's what's going to make people, uh, that's what's going to make their decision. Um, you know, show that the, the social proof of your patients, uh, you know, your staff, making sure that you're going to have a good experience, the patient's going to have a good experience when they come in and interact with your staff, and then ultimately you. Um, you've got to show that, you know, not only are you competent, you know, they already know you've got the, the degree and the, the certifications. People these days assume you're competent. Uh, assume that you're qualified. You know, 50 or 100 years ago in dentistry, people didn't necessarily assume that you were qualified even with the degree. Today, people assume that you're qualified and they're looking for that awesome experience. Um, you know, 50, 100 years ago, they looked around questioning who was even competent or who was qualified and then they went with that person. Today, everybody's qualified. 
and they don't just want somebody that's qualified to do the work. They want somebody that's going to wow them. Um, I think the, the best way I've ever seen this illustrated is uh, I actually saw a, a publication from Zappos, which is just emphatic about customer service and customer experience. And, uh, you know, Amazon bought them out, and, and Amazon's got that same customer service philosophy. And the diagram I saw had three faces. It had the unhappy face with the, you know, the frown. And that's the patient that's going to post a negative review online about you. The patient that had a negative experience and they're upset when they leave. And then in the middle of the picture uh, of this diagram, it had the, the patient that was just okay. You know, they had the flat line for the face. They weren't happy. They weren't disgruntled. They were just kind of okay. And that's the kind of patient that is going to come into your practice, have the work done, pay their bill, and probably never come back again. That's the patient that you didn't wow. You were qualified. You did the work. They don't have a complaint. Your staff didn't, didn't give them a bad experience or upset them or you know, they didn't have even you know, some illegitimate claim about their insurance didn't pay for something that came back on you. But it was just okay. And those kind of patients you'll probably never hear from again. They'll leave your practice. A year later, you'll get a request to transfer records, and you'll go, oh, well, you know, I did some extractions for Susie or a crown or whatever it may be, and um, yeah, well, I wonder why she's leaving. And then over on the right side of the diagram, you've got the, the smiley face. And those are the patients that you've wowed. Those are the patients that are going to pay, stay, and refer. The ones that are going to be happy when they leave. They're going to give you the video testimonials. They're going to tell all their friends about you. And that's the kind of patient you want. Um, if you haven't taken that next step to wowing them, that's what you're missing out on. So um, I think you've got a, a tremendous start here with all the, the demographic information you have. Um, integrating that into a web approach, looking at things like video, automatic communication systems through Infusionsoft to where we can keep in touch automatically with emails going out. Uh, maybe it's you know a prospect, maybe it's somebody that completed treatment that you want to send a referral sequence to. Maybe it's uh, somebody that came in and you gave a treatment plan to uh, but has an accepted treatment. We can automate all of your follow-up for you uh, with keeping in touch with those people through email and, and postcards. Um, phone call tracking. Any marketing you're doing, you know, what worked six months ago doesn't work today and what works today isn't going to work six months from now. With phone tracking, you know what's working right now. You know, hey, this, this advertisement, you see the phone calls going down um, as you run it more and more. You know it's reaching that point of diminishing returns. If you're not tracking phone calls, you simply don't have that data available to you. Uh, we've had some interesting studies done with practices that do multi-mode marketing. You know, they have several pieces of marketing out there in the same time. And 25, maybe 30% of the time, the patient actually remembers what prompted them to call you. Um, interestingly enough, another 25% mentioned that they found this doctor in an advertisement that the doctor wasn't even advertising in. So it's kind of like, um, you know, I've seen uh, the police or FBI before mention that eyewitnesses are notoriously unreliable. Um, and that's very similar to the way patients are when you start asking them questions about how did you find me. 25% uh, of the time they said they found you somewhere that you didn't even market in and 25% of the time they were actually right with the last marketing piece they saw before they picked up the phone and call you. And that's what you want to know is, is the last step uh, because you want to know that that piece is actually producing calls. It's not about branding, it's about direct response. And you know, there in the middle, that 50% of people, you know, who knows what they selected, um, you know, they, they gave a wrong somewhere you actually marketed but it wasn't the last piece that motivated them um, but it, it's not the branding that you want to focus on it's it's direct response it's what how many dollars can you spend on a marketing piece that you send out and then what is the direct return on that investment 
And sure, you're going to have some residual from that, but you want to look at the direct return. Um, you know what you can produce from a marketing piece uh, within the deadline that you put on that marketing piece, uh, because every piece that you send out has to have a deadline and an act by date or a free offer or something that's going to compel people to take action. Um, and if not, it's going to sit on their fridge and, and they're never going to do anything with it. And three months later, they're going to throw it away uh, because they solved the problem somewhere else or the problem went away or um, you know they got a marketing piece from some other guy that had a deadline and they go, oh, wow, I better act on this. This is a good deal and it runs out and they went ahead with it. So um, hope that gives you a, a little bit better idea. I know this was a, a little bit um, condensed compared to a lot of these reviews that I like to get more in depth with and, and show more options. But you know, just for for new doctors, it's difficult to really illustrate, um, you know, what they're doing online uh, or where they need to go. Um, I'll leave you with this flow chart that we use to really illustrate how our approach to web marketing generates new patients. You know, patients are going to search in a number of different places, whether it be Google, Yahoo, AdWords, local search, YouTube videos. Bing, um, AdWords Express, AdWords, who knows what it is. And they use all kinds of different devices, tablets, computers, cell phones, and netbooks, and, and Kindles, and who knows what they're searching on. Um, and people are searching semantically these days. They might search the way thoughts are put together in their mind. You know, we've got some illustrations here of some very simple terms, dentist, implant dentist, all on four, New Albany, Indiana. But when you look at the searches that actually come into your website, we send out a weekly report for all of our doctors that show what people actually search for. Um, you're talking about five to ten keyword strings of searches that people are just typing in partial sentences into the search engine. And that's how people search is how they think these days. Um, and Google is becoming more and more accustomed to that. Uh, of course, it gives Google more information on, you know, not only just how people think, but the more keywords somebody types in, the more Google can tweak their search results and hone in on what that person wants to see. Um, the result, of course, what you want that patient to see is everything about you, whether it's your Google AdWords ad, your website, YouTube videos, Google Places, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, a webinar, maybe we ghost write a book for you um, on uh, you know, cosmetic dentistry or oral surgery or uh, dental implants. Once that prospect enters into your website or they see your name, if it's in traditional marketing, you have to have a system in place to take that prospect to the next level. Just because now they found you doesn't mean they're going to click on you. But if you've got a compelling message here on the search engine, and they click on you. Now you've got to take them a step further. You have to offer them something of value, uh, whether it's a limited time offer, a free report, something that's going to give you their email address, capture their email address for you, get them to call. If they don't make the call, maybe they just want to get some information. I mentioned that automatic follow up, the infusion solve, so that we're automatically keeping in touch with them. Uh, if it's the phone call side, you want to record those calls. You want to make sure that your front office staff is converting those calls into prospects, into appointments, and into butts in your chair. Because that's what it comes down to at the end of the day is your marketing dollars have to put butts in your chair that you can work on or it's not producing an ROI for you. And at the end of the month or the end of the week or whatever period you like to review your results in, you need to be able to easily see what this is doing for you. You know, which marketing campaign, how many calls, consults, cases, and dollars produced did that generate? What is my true ROI? How many dollars did I spend and how many dollars did I get back? Uh, and with our Zetetics, we do all of this. So I hope that makes it a little bit easier to kind of visualize how web marketing works. Um, a lot of people look at it and you know, they, they see the, they think of the cloud and everything out there and it's very confusing, but marketing online is, is much the same way as it's been for the last hundred years. It's just simply not mail order anymore, not 
uh, TV. Um, it's just a new marketing vehicle. But the philosophy, the principles behind direct response marketing online are the same. Uh, it's just a little bit more techy, and uh, you know, it's a, a little bit more uh, mysterious in the cloud to have the technology and the automation and the system to put all this together. Uh, of course, you know, Infusionsoft and phone call tracking and and a lot of these uh, technologies, a lot of these devices over here didn't exist a few years ago. Um, and um, that's what, what we want to do here for dentists is allow them to get back to working on the dentist, on the patients, uh, allow you guys to produce more um, and let us drive the patients to you. Uh, because you know your time is better spent when you can bill the patients. You're not making any money when you're playing with your website or or uh, you know having your staff uh, you know automatically or not so automatically doing follow up uh, to your prospects that uh, have or have not accepted treatment. So I hope this gives you a better idea of of what we can do for you. Uh, I'm going to send you some information on um, packages, uh, what you can expect, and. Uh, some of these things sound uh, like a good fit for you. I'd love to chat more. My number here is 502-509-1413. Thanks for your time, Dr. Bailey. I appreciate it.